Hey guys, welcome to another session from Edureka. My name is Ayushi and today we'll be understanding a very basic yet interesting question that is who is a data scientist? So before we discuss the nooks and crannies of data science, let's first have a look at the agenda for today. So first and foremost, we'll be understanding who a data scientist is. Then we shall delve deep and talk about what data science is all about. We'll also have a look at who can take up data science followed by a section on how you can become a data scientist. Finally, we'll discuss what are the different skills and responsibilities of data scientists and we'll end the session by understanding how much a data scientist actually earn. So let's start off with the very first topic that is who is a data scientist. So data scientists are big data wranglers. They deal with a large amount of data and use their various skills in math, statistics, programming to clean the data, manage it and organize it. So a day in the life of data scientists looks something like this. They start off by exploring data, analyzing it and then they use these insights to make data driven strategic decisions. Further, they are also responsible for communicating these insights and decisions with their colleagues, co-workers and project stakeholders. Now that we briefly understood who a data scientist is, let's discuss what exactly data science is all about. Now that we have briefly understood who a data scientist is, well data science or data driven science is a combination of various fields including statistics, programming and algorithms which allows you to take strategic data driven decision. So this means that professionals working in data science deal with enormous amounts of data which can be both structured and unstructured. So we will be discussing more about data science in the upcoming slides. But before we delve deeper into this, let's understand who can take up data science as a career. So the answer to this question is fairly simple. Now anyone from almost any background can take up data science. Now the only condition is that you must be interested in math, statistics and programming. Now as you can see from the slide, professionals working in IT, marketing, finance, healthcare, media retailers or any other field can take up data science. So let's look at a few use cases in each of these fields. To start with IT, professionals may utilize data science for building APIs, they may implement various algorithms in machine learning and things like that. Next we have marketing professionals. So over here they deal with a lot of data related to customer behavior which can be easily utilized to build powerful data driven algorithms. Moving ahead we have finance professionals. So they use data science for asset management or you can say complicated calculations which are usually done manually but they take up a lot of time and effort. Then healthcare is one of the fields that is currently utilizing data science very extensively. Now statistics like patient health, pharmaceutical inventory, etc. They require a lot of calculations and efficiency at the same time. Now all of this can be achieved using data science. So moving on to next domain, we have media agencies and channels. So they use data science just like marketers so that they can understand the likes and dislike of their audience and generate their content accordingly. And finally, retailers can use data science for in-depth analytics and inventory of the products and trades. So now that you know that you are eligible for becoming a data scientist, let's look at the milestone you have to hit in order to get into data science. So as you can see here in the slide, this is the exact roadmap to become a data scientist. So it starts from knowing few fundamentals, then moving to statistics, programming, implementing machine learning techniques. Then you have data visualization and knowledge of big data and various frameworks. Then you have data ingestion and munging along with the knowledge of various tools and problem solving capabilities in order to become a data scientist. You can also watch the entire video or read a blog on the entire topic as in how you can become a data scientist. So I'll be leaving the links in the description so you can go ahead enjoy the video and let me know how you think about it. Well moving ahead with this video let's get into the details of all the skills you need to have in order to become a data scientist. So the first major prerequisite for getting into a career in data science is the fundamentals. Now you must be well aware of all the fundamentals of maths, data structure etc. So these may include the matrices and linear algebra functions. Then you have hash functions, binary tree, relational algebra, database basics. Then you have ETL processes or you can say extract transform load. Then you also have reporting BI or any kind of analytics. Then comes your statistics. So this includes descriptive statistics. For example, your mean, median, range. Then you have standard deviation, variance and things like that. Then you have exploratory data analysis. You have percentiles and outliers. You have probability theory. You have various theorems like Bayes theorem. Then you have random variables. 
You may also come across various functions like CDF, which is cumulative distribution function, and various other statistics fundamentals. So I would suggest you guys to pick up a data set from anywhere and start practicing right now. Then you must know programming. So you need to be an expertise in any of the programming language. Well, I would suggest Python or R since these two are the most common languages to practice data science. Well, both these languages have absolutely amazing libraries used for data analysis, visualization, and a lot of fun stuff. Moving ahead, you need to have machine learning and advanced machine learning concept, or you can also say as deep learning. So you should understand what is machine learning and how it works. You should also know the different types of machine learning techniques, for example, supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and reinforcement learning. Now, by mentioning these algorithms, I mean you must have good knowledge on various supervised learning algorithm and unsupervised learning. So, to name some algorithms, we have linear regression, logistic regression, decision tree, random forest, k nearest neighbor, clustering, and you have a lot of algorithms like that. Now, once you're done with machine learning, you can further go deep with advanced machine learning, which you can also call as deep learning. So nowadays, everyone is talking about deep learning as it solved a lot of limitations of traditional machine learning approaches. Now, I would suggest you to understand how deep learning works. So let me help you with few deep learning concepts that you should be familiar with. So you should be familiar with the fundamentals of neural networks. Then any one library used for creating deep learning models such as TensorFlow or Keras. Then you need to understand how convolutional neural networks work. Then you have recurrent neural networks, RBM autoencoders, and things like that. Then we have a very important part of data lifecycle that is none other than data visualization. Now, a good hands-on knowledge is required on various data visualization tools. Now, even you can use a programming language for that purpose. Now, as I've discussed earlier, Python or R both have wonderful libraries for data visualization. If I have to name some, Python has Matplotlib, Seaborn. And in R, you have ggplot and many other algorithms like that. Now, apart from programming, you can also have various visualization tools. So to name some, we have Tableau, we have Kibana, Google Charts, and many more. Then moving ahead, we have big data. So big data is everywhere, and there is almost an urgent need to collect and preserve whatever data is being generated for the fear of missing out on something important. So now that we all know that there is a huge amount of data floating around, so what we do with it is all matters right now. Well, this is why big data analytics is in the frontiers of IT. So big data analytics has become crucial as it aids in improving business decision makings and providing the biggest edge over the competitors. Now this applies for organizations as well as the professionals in the analytics domain. Now as a data scientist, it is very important to have knowledge about the various framework that can process big data. So two of the most famous ones are Hadoop and Spark. Next, we have data ingestion. So the process of importing data, transferring, loading, and processing your data for later use or storage in a database is called data ingestion. Now, this can involve loading data from a variety of sources. So to name some data ingestion tools, we have Apache Flume and Apache Scoop. Then next is data munging. So guys, if you have ever performed data analysis, you might have come across feature selection before you apply your analytical model to the data. So in general, all the activities that you do on the raw data to make it clean enough to input to your analytical algorithm is called as your data munging. So you can also use here Python or R packages for that. Now, it is one of the most important part of the data life cycle. Now, as a data scientist, you should be able to understand what all features are important in the data set and what all features can be removed. So you should also be able to identify your dependent variable or you can say label. Obviously, you have to remove inconsistency in your data set. So all these things are part of data munging or you can say data wrangling. Then coming up next, we have toolbox. So you might find this section pretty redundant, but I think it is very important to have good knowledge on certain tools. For example, MS Excel, then you can take any programming languages like Python or R. Then you must be having a knowledge on Hadoop, Spark, Tableau, and tools like these. Then last but not the least, a data scientist must have data-driven problem-solving skills. Now, all the things we have discussed so far includes tools and techniques that you can learn. But a data-driven problem-solving approach is something that you need to develop. So it will only come with the experience. Now, a data scientist needs to know how to productively approach a problem. Now, this means identifying a situation, its salient features, then figuring out how to frame a question that will yield the desired answer then deciding what approximations make sense 
and consulting the right co-worker at the appropriate junctures of the analytic process. Now, all of that in addition to knowing which data science methods to apply to the problem at hand. So let me combine all these skills at first. So here comes a data scientist, which is full of skills. So one thing is for sure, guys, you cannot become a data scientist overnight. It's a journey for sure and a challenging one. So once you achieve all these skills, congratulations, you are a data scientist. Now moving on, let's now talk about the roles and responsibilities of a data scientist. Now, as you can see here, the major responsibilities of a data scientist include optimizing and building classifiers using machine learning. Then you have data mining, cleaning and processing data, extending data and finally building prediction models. So starting at the top, data scientist needs to be well versed with the building, optimizing and deployment of classifiers using machine learning. So this may involve predicting the class of a given data points. So data scientists can achieve this by using what we call learners. So these could include lazy learners like k nearest neighbor and case based reasoning or eager learners like decision tree, naive base and artificial neural networks. Now the next major responsibility of a data scientist is data mining. So this is the process of examining and extracting data from a pre existing database to generate a new information. Now after this a data scientist needs to process and clean the data. So as the name suggests this involves getting rid of the junk or you can see the iterative data and optimizing the data for the most accurate readings. Then extending data involves adding new resources and mapping the data according to the insights that needs to be extracted using models like the operational data hub model. And finally, a data scientist should be skilled in building predictive algorithm and models that can enable strategic decision making. So these were all about the data scientist roles and responsibilities. Next, let's talk about one of the most interesting facts about a data scientist, which is their salary. So according to several sources, the salary of a data scientist can range anywhere from rupees 3 lakhs to rupees 20 lakhs in India and USD 63K to 128K in the United States. So these are some of the highest median salary of a non-executive professional in the market right now. So by this, we come to the end of today's session. So guys, if you're interested in data science course that we offer, you can drop in your email ID along with the course and we will reply you back at the earliest. Thank you everyone for attending this session. Have a nice day. Enjoy. Bye bye.